Okay, and now we'll talk about the Cortex, the joystick, and the keys. Alright, we'll do another video series later about how to program. I'm just going to talk about the mechanical aspect of these right now. So this is your Cortex, and as you can see, there are 10 motor slots. So if I can figure out, there we go. Alright, so you can see it says motor, and it's numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It is exactly how you'll see in the program as well. If you'll tell motor 2 to turn, and then that will tell port 2 here to turn that motor. So that's, you need, remember that when you do your programming and your wiring, is that you want to make sure that you put 2, motor 2, you know which motor that is. So if that's the left front wheel, or that's the lift motor, or whatever. You won't remember what that is, and then tell your programmer what motor is in what port. Etc. Etc. And then we have the first and tenth slot motors one and ten are two wire only. So those are only good for motors that have a two wire plug on them. If you have an older three wire motor, that will not work. If you're using a uh, motor controller, if you're using one of the motor controllers that won't work either because you're using a three wire at the end so one and ten are great for like your back wheels or your lift because generally your back wheels or your lift your motors are really close to your cortex so you can just plug those straight into one and ten or one or ten and that will be great for using your lift or maybe your back wheels because your back wheels are fairly close to your cortex or if you absolutely need to you could use a two-wire extension cable. So then, though, that's the motor ports. And they're also notched. So you can see all of them have little notches. So you want to keep that in mind, because when you look at the end of your cable, you can see that the red is in the middle, black is on the one side, and the signal, uh, signal white is on one side. So you need to make sure you get the signal wire and the correct side on the cortex because there's three long. So what you need to do is you need to look at that notch. You can see that notch there on there on the left side there. You can line that notch up with the notch on the cortex and then plug it in. Then as you can see the notch the notch lines up with the cortex and then if you look at that, you can, it's kind of hard to see because the wire wiggles a little bit. You want to make sure you don't put too much pressure on the wire. As you can see, that kind of lines up with slot 5. So now you know that this motor, whatever motor is plugged into this, is motor number 5. That's how you should address it from now on. If that's motor number 5, then you go in the program and tell it that's motor number 5. Turn motor number 5 on the joystick, controller, whatever. Okay, So that's the motor slots. And that, that's what you're going to use first, okay? You're going to first use the motor slots. That's most important. You can't do anything without those. Then, let's say you wanted to get into sensors eventually. All your sensors will plug into, um, well, a working sensor will plug into one of these guys. This longer strip on the side, these are all sensors. And you can see they say on the side, if you're out where I can get some light, you can see they have, say analog and digital. So these first eight are analog, and then the next 12 are all digital. So you can keep that in mind when you use different uh, sensors. Some of them are analog sensors, some of them are digital sensors. So that'll be a completely different video all for sensors. Then we have your joystick. So your joystick has eight channels. So then that's how it addresses the motors. So the motors can spin either left or right, which is clockwise or counterclockwise. And then that's either negative 127 or positive 127. And that's what we'll be taking care of in the programming. But what you want to do is if you want to turn the motor like forward, then you'll want that to control forward, right? That makes sense for that to be forward, and then that'll be backwards. So that'll be two different directions on the motor. So when you assign your motor, your slot 5 motor, your port 5 motor, you're going to assign that to one of these channels. 
So as you can see, they're all numbered. Here's channel one, and you can see there's an arrow that goes left and right. And what that means is that this way is channel one. So there's channel one, channel one, channel one, channel one. Then there's channel two, which goes up and down. Channel two, channel one, channel two, channel one. And the same thing here, channel three and four, so there's three, there's four. So then you have your bumpers at the top here, and your bumpers are done a little bit differently. So you can see you have bumper five here, and if you can look really closely, you'll see an, a U there and a D there. That stands for up and down. So that's channel five up, channel five down. And then that's just on or off. Where with your analog sensors, you can have somewhere in between. You can have zero, like 65, 127, you know? You have different values in there, and it's controllable. It's an analog. Where these are digital, it's either off or on, zero or one. So that you could use that to control the motors at full speed or off, full speed down, full speed up. That's great for your lift. So if you want to bring your lift up, you can hit that up. You can bring your lift down, you can hit that down, etc., etc. And then you have the exact same thing for a six. You have channel six up and down. So five up, five down, six up, six down. Make sense? Then here's the tricky ones. You have seven and eight. And you can see seven is all four of these buttons. So if you can look really closely, you'll see channel seven has an up button, a down button, a right button, and a left button. And channel eight has a down button, an up button, a right button, and a left button. Make sense? So then in the programming, this is key information you won't give your programmer. You won't tell your programmer that the left front wheel is port 5. And we want control going forward with channel 3, which is this. And maybe we want to rotate with channel 1, which is this way. So then he'll take all that information, and we'll take care of this later, and then you'll tell which motors to turn which way at which time. You know, won't tell him your lift motor is in, in slot 10 or slot 9, and you won't tell him that we won't control that with channel 6. So then that's how you do all that. And then these, all right, so then when you first get your Cortex in your controller, the first thing you do is you pair them together, because these guys are separate. As of right now, they're separate, they're independent little units. To make sure that this guy can communicate with this guy, you're going to use your programming cable. So you take your programming cable, this orange cable that has two ends on it that are both uh, A's, USB A's. You plug one guy into your Cortex, it's a little slot right there, and that guy plugs in right there. And you take the other end of your cable, and you plug it into your joystick, just like that. So now they're connected. And then what you'll do is you'll turn both of them on. To turn them on, you generally need a battery. So, this is the standard VEX battery. It's 7.2 volts at 3,000 milliamps. So that means it'll last a fairly long time. So then, this guy has a connection just like this. And you'll see there's a little, a little bump on one side of it. You can see one side of the bump, and the other side doesn't. So you'll take that in with a bump, and you'll plug it into the power. You can see right there, it says power. Take this guy plug it into there, and then boom, bum, bing, there is now power. Well, there would be power. It's an older Cortex and battery, so they don't stay in very well, so you won't be careful about putting too much pressure on your connectors. And that can actually destroy the Cortex. If that connector comes too loose, it can destroy the Cortex. So be careful when you connect your battery, so then that connects power. Then you also have an on-off switch right here. So if you slide that up, you can see the light is flashing. And there's a game light, a vaccinate light, and robot light. So the robot light is how good your battery is. Green is charged, yellow is dying, and then red is pretty much dead. You need to change it pretty quickly. And then vexnet is the communication. So green vexnet means this guy is communicating with this guy correctly. And you have the exact same thing on this guy. You have joystick, robot, and vexnet. So joystick light is the batteries on the joystick. The robot light is the batteries on the robot, and VexNet is the communication between the two. So using these three lights, you can troubleshoot 
what's going on with the Cortex. If there's a problem with maybe the robot battery's dead, maybe the joystick battery's dead, like we have here. And you can see if you actually have a good connection or not. And then there's also the game at the bottom. And game will only turn on when we're actually plugged into the field. So don't worry about that really at all. Now you can see, if I turn that guy on, and I turn this guy on, and the on switch is right back here, I can turn them off, turn them on, they're both on, they'll connect, and the Vexenite will be green. That means they're now paired together. Okay, so this guy will communicate with this guy wirelessly. So now I can turn them both off. I can unplug this, unplug that, and then I'll take these Vex keys. And these are the newest Vex keys. These are Vex keys 2.0. And you can see, you can tell because they're white. They're white and gray. These are the new ones, these are the better ones. The old keys, we don't have as many of them, and they're not preferred, but they're completely black. So instead of being white and gray, they're 100% black. Um, you may have to use those, but preferably not. So then these guys just have a USB end on them. So one slides into there, and one slides into there, and then that's how they communicate. So the signal is going from the cortex, so you tell it to go forward, it goes to this, over to this guy, into the cortex, telling motor 5 to turn forward. And then that's the basic idea of how it works. And then to connect, you just turn it on and turn it on. I don't have any batteries in here right now, so it's not going to actually connect. And you can see it will do this kind of like flashing when it's trying to connect. It's trying to find each other, so if you see this, it's trying to find each other, and then the red flashing VexNet means it couldn't find it. It's all sad now. And then that'll happen with both of these, the pain of the connects. So what you want is you want that when you turn them on, you want all the lights to be green. If all the lights are green, you're happy and good. So if they're not connecting and you know they're um, good, you may want to repair it. Just plug the, cord the cable into both ends, pair them together, turn them off and on, and take them out, put the keys in, and try it again. Okay? And then there's power for the Cortex, on-off switch for the Cortex, and then here's the battery backup. So the battery backup looks like... Okay, I don't have a battery backup, but it's a 9-volt battery, and what it does is during the game, if this battery dies, it'll prevent the loss of connection between the two, causing problems with your robot. So that's, that's why it is, and I'll show that in a later video as well. But that's how you turn your Cortex on, that's how you pair it with your controller, that's how you use the keys. And be delicate with these keys, don't drop them, be very careful with them. Don't drop any of this, this is all really expensive, and expensive to replace, and very, very delicate, so be careful with them. And then, if you want to program your bot, let me cover that real quick. You take your programming cable, your orange cable, plug it into your Cortex, and then you take this other end of the cable and plug it into your computer. Okay? That's the physical setup for programming. We'll talk about programming in a little bit. And then that is how you use... The, oh, and then batteries on the joystick. To get to the batteries, you need to take this guy out and then undo the screw. So you take a... whatever screw you have. Sometimes they're old motor screws. So you take your 554 Allen wrench, you put it in there and you <coughs> unscrew it. This one's a little stripped. I don't have the best Allen wrench either. So you unscrew that. And then that fits like that and then now open up and then it takes six AAA batteries. And we use blue VEX rechargeable batteries, and we'll show that charging station in a later video. And then you just replace those batteries, screw that back in, and put your VEX key back in, your VEX net key. And then that's the logical brain.